good evening everyone uh, the topic which i am going to present is audio vestibular interactions so mainly what is the connection between hearing and balance <clears throat> so uh, i'll be mainly highlighting two aspects how ears help to see and how hearing can be a useful aspect for balance we will watch this video this mainly a function which we see in bats <clears throat> Well, there are two types of bats in the world. Mega bats, such as foot bats, navigate mainly by sight. And micro bats, which live in dark places, navigate using echolocation. They use their ears to see by listening for echoes. How can micro bats see with their ears? Bats can emit ultrasonic sounds, sounds at frequencies higher than the human ear can detect. Then, they listen for the returning echoes that bounce off obstacles or prey and use them to navigate or hunt for food. A bat's call can range all the way up to 160 kilohertz, a frequency eight times higher than humans can hear. Once they detect the prey, they will raise the frequency of calls even higher. Why do they raise their frequency? If the wavelength of sound wave is bigger than the size of prey, sound waves can be considered to directly pass them. A higher frequency results a shorter wavelength, so that the sound will reflect when it reaches the prey. Okay. How do they determine the location of their prey then? You know how sound reflects similarly to the way light does? When microbats receive echoes, they can process several pieces of information at the same time, such as the Doppler shift. For example, the flapping wings of an insect create periodic compressions of molecules in the air. If the prey is flying toward the bat, frequency of the echoes is higher than the frequency of the sound that the bat sent. And if the prey is flying away from the bat, Frequency of the echoes is lower than the frequency sent. This is the Doppler effect, so they can distinguish whether a fly is in motion or at rest. By knowing the duration from the time it shouted till its own echo is heard, bats can determine how much time is needed to reach a prey. I see. Did you know that echolocation is a very useful technology in human lives? For example, we... So this video basically depicts how a bat uses sound to see objects and how it is helpful for uh, hunting uh, prey. <clears throat> now coming on to echolocation abilities in human, whether human can do this. So it's again basically the same thing, the ability to detect objects in the environment by sensing echoes from those objects by actively creating sounds. You can do this by snapping fingers or by making clicking noises with mouth. Uh, usually sighted individuals doesn't do this because they rely mainly on vision. To see but whereas people who are blind they can make use of this to see objects in the environment and we have seen that researchers have shown when a blind does this it's mainly the activation of primary visual cortex that is happening although they are depending on sound the activation takes place at the primary visual cortex. You can see this, 
this is an echolocation expert and you can see that the visual brain areas are getting stimulated and auditory brain areas are not much activated. Uh, you can see this, you can see the video of a human who is using echolocation, he is blind and how he uses echolocation to see objects. Ben Underwood is blind. Both eyes were removed when he was three, leaving him with no vision at all. So how on earth does Ben do this? And this? And even this? I don't think I've ever come across somebody like Ben. Uh, you know, he is quite unique. Ben lost his eyes to cancer. But unbelievably, he's taught himself to see with sound. If he chooses to go out there and, and ride that bicycle, let him ride the bicycle. It's got to be very smart. Somewhere in there, it's a little genius going on. I don't consider myself blind. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Ben has no guide dog and never uses a white cane. He's not even using his hands. Instead, he sees with sound. He makes a sharp click which bounces back off nearby objects. Amazingly, Ben's ears pick up the echoes and he can precisely locate where things are. Ben is the only person in the world who sees using nothing but echolocation. Well, I've been able to tell where walls are and where things on the ground are. If I click down, then I can hear them easier. But if I'm walking, I'm just clicking over it, it's not gonna get it. And I can tell where desks are in the classroom and stuff like that. I can hear the wall over there, the couch over there. I can hear the wall behind me. I can hear the wall over there and the TV and the computer. Yeah. Ben, I need a towel for drying because I don't have all my kitchen towels in here. All right, Mom, I'm going to go get it. Ben's echolocation is so good that at home his mum, Aquanetta, Uncle Kerry, and brother Isaiah make no allowances for his blindness at all. When I was a little kid, I didn't really know he was blind. I just knew he was my brother. Did he make it? He's determined to do what he's going to do. And he refuses for somebody to label him as blind. You see this kid, they have a whole different way of thinking. <laughs> it's magic and it's real. I don't think I've ever seen anyone quite as remarkable as Ben, uh, nor have I seen anyone quite as remarkable as Ben's mom. And I think that's a lot of the secret to, to Ben's amazing talents. He knows that there's nothing impossible for him. You know, and it's not. So we can see how powerful the brain is, like using sound, how we are able to see. <clears throat> so with this brief introduction, let me uh, move to the topic. Like we know, balance is mainly mediated by visual, vestibular and somatosensory input. And from these examples, it is very clear that audition provides spatial acoustic cues that may be considered as important sensory information to maintain postural control. <clears throat> so I will go through some of the studies 
which is already done and which has established the importance of hearing and balance. So this is a study mainly showing hearing loss and faults among older adults. And the study has found that there is a strong association between audiometric hearing loss and the faults detected in patients. So this was done on a patient group 40 to 69 years of age. And over a period of time, they studied these individuals and they could found that for every 10 dB increase in hearing loss, there was a 1.4 fold increase towards of an individual reporting falling. And even people with mild hearing loss, they could see that they are three times more likely to have a history of falling than people with normal hearing. So what could be the reasons? The reason they postulated was there, there could be a concomitant dysfunction of both the cochlear and vestibular sense organs because of their shared location. Another aspect, because there is a decreased hearing sensitivity, it may limit access to auditory cues and that are very important for environmental awareness. Another aspect could be, it could be mediated through the cognitive load and reduced attentional resources if a person has hearing loss. So that could impair the maintenance of postural balance. <clears throat> so this study again shows the relationship between postural stability and spatial hearing. They have taken two tests mainly to study the uh, group. It was tandem Romberg test and Fukuda stepping test. And the indices that they measured were the sway of the person and the angular deviation of each participant. How they did was, they provided an auditory spatial reference. It was given the noise, a broadband noise source was provided directly in front of the participant, located one to two mil meters away. And the Participants who were taken in this study were 18 to 52 years of age and all of them had normal vision, normal hearing and a normal vestibular function. So the head tracker recorded the position of the participants head for the tandem Romberg test. They did the study in different conditions, eyes open condition with no sound, eyes closed condition with no sound and eyes closed condition with sound. So they were basically measuring the head sway and the head movements under these conditions. And the result showed a significant benefit in postural stability in both the experiments when spatial auditory cues were present. So when the audition auditory cues were given, the pe people who participated in the study were able to balance themselves very well. And they could even identify that in the tandem Romberg test, the spatial auditory cues alone provided a 9% reduction in mean sway. And in the Fukuda stepping test, there was a 76% reduction in the mean body sway. Uh, you can see that visual cues, it has provided more benefit compared to auditory cues. For the tandem Romberg test, visual cues provided 44% compared to 9% auditory and 98% in Fukuda stepping test compared to 76% auditory. So from this experiments, we can understand that a single fixed sound source can provide sufficient spatial cues for the central nervous system to better control postural stability. Although it is very clear that the vestibular system uh, receives weaker input than the visual cues, but still the auditory cues are very important in maintaining balance. Now, the clinical utility of this could be if patients present with coexisting hearing loss and balance disorders, Hearing aids which can improve their hearing function could be a handy tool in maintaining balance also. 
So people have done studies on the effect of hearing aids on postural stability. So this was done on patients aged 65 years and above in aided and unaided conditions. They studied uh, using Rombergon foam test and tandem sta stance test. Again, they provided a broadband white noise sound in this experiment. And they could find that when the patients were wearing hearing aids, they could perform significantly better. And they postulated that the brain relies on the sound localization ability of the ears to create a three-dimensional map of the sound source around an individual and it keeps the body steady by maintaining its relationship to these external sound sources. So the hearing aids can be used as a treatment modality for imbalance in older adults with hearing loss. This study also depicts the same aspect. There is a contribution uh, in, in this experiment, they studied the effects of sound on postural sway using center of pressure analysis. Different subjects were taken, 50 subjects with normal hearing, 28 with hearing loss and 19 with the vestibular dysfunction. So here also they could find that auditory cues are utilized by subjects with normal hearing to improve postural sway. And the postural control is definitely diminished when there is a hearing loss and people are overcoming it with the help of hearing aids. This study done in 2017 also depicts the same thing. So it compares the static balance function between elderly with hearing loss who used hearing aids and those who did not use. So the indicators for postural stability were center of pressure parameters and different conditions were tested and they could find that in open eyes foam surface condition there was greater SD velocity in the off aided than the on aided. So when they were not wearing hearing aids they were having greater sway and the same thing was noted when they were unaided than when they were wearing the hearing aids. So the hearing aids undoubtedly improve static balance function by reducing the ST velocity. Same thing is noted for uh, in this study where people were implanted and uh, with it was a study done on single-sided deafness patients and when the binaural hearing was restored with the implant the balance test results significantly improved and they could found that there is a 10 to 30 percent improvement in balance function when the single-sided deafness patients were implanted. Now, uh, there are a lot of things coming up in the hearing aid uh, field, a lot of developments are coming. We already know that there are combination devices available in hearing aids, whereas it helps in masking tinnitus and it could be a uh, you can use tinnitus retraining therapy mainly to uh, rehabilitate or uh, to retrain the nervous system for tinnitus management and it is also a handy tool for managing hyperacusis patients and we all know these balance disorders can coexist with uh, hearing loss tinnitus uh, hyperacusis all these conditions so already hearing aids that are there has these functions which could manage these conditions. And there are uh, new developments are coming in hearing aid industry where artificial intelligence is being used. And mainly they are planning to come up with devices. It is hearing aids instead of improving not only hearing, it is becoming more like a wearable device wherein it is able to detect heart rate and oxygen saturation levels in the blood. It is also looking at ways to non-invasively monitor the glucose levels in a user's blood and include a thermometer to detect body temperature. And uh, we, uh, I think if uh, what I knew, if the information is right, probably in this year itself, some of the companies are planning to come up with these sort of facilities in a hearing aid. 
and most importantly with respect to balance there are motion sensors the hearing aids are uh, working on inertial sensors like accelerometers and gyroscopes and they will have motion sensors so if a person is wearing a hearing aid it will help to track the physical activity and if a person is falling there could be provision to automatically send alerting messages to relatives or who are close by so people elderly people if they are staying alone this could be a handy tool so overall uh, hearing aid usage it may have a significant contribution not only in terms of improving hearing and it could be helpful tool for maintaining balance also thanks a lot